Welcome back to Cradwise Academy, where we're giving you the skills and knowledge required to start investing in equity crowdfunding. I'm Brian, and today we're going on to the next topic for investing fundamentals, and we'll be talking about IRR, internal rate of return, exit multiples, and failure rates. Let's get into it. As a reminder, you're part of the level one novice course right now, and you're in module two, investing fundamentals. We also have some level two intermediate investor courses talking about early stage investing specifics, as well as level three advanced courses that get into actually screening specific deals and other advanced topics like investor psychology, taxes, tokens, and more. So an overview of what we'll be covering today. We'll be discussing what is an exit or return multiple, what is internal rate of return, or IRR? When do you use each IRR or exit multiples? What startup exit multiples are required for your portfolio's success, which is going to be contrary to what a lot of you may believe? And then lastly, the assignment for today. So IRR versus exit multiple. At a high level, what's the difference? The biggest difference between the two is that internal rate of return takes time into account. So if you were to look at a diagram showing the internal rate of return and exit multiple, you can see where exit multiple is a component of IRR, but IRR also has time. Let's get into an example, starting with an exit multiple. Assume you invest $100 in startup A. Five years later, after an acquisition, or an exit as we call in the industry, you get $500 returned back to you. Now the equation for exit multiple is returned capital divided by invested capital. So in this case, what's the exit multiple? If you said it's 500 divided by 100 is 5x, you'd be entirely correct. And that's all there is to it for calculating the exit multiple. Now, IRR is a little more complicated. The formal definition of internal rate of return, or IRR, is that it is the discount rate that makes the net present value, or NPV, of future cash flows equal to zero. And the internal portion of that name comes in because it ignores external factors, such as inflation, cost of capital, etc. So in layman's terms, what does this mean? IRR is essentially the annualized rate of return for comparing different investment opportunities side by side, which may have different time frames. Thus, it's giving you a better apples to apples comparison instead of looking at apples to oranges. The equation for IRR is shown here. Essentially, it is the capital at time t divided by the initial capital invested, which is the c subscript i, that ratio raised to the 1 over t, where t is the number of years, minus 1. That will give you a decimal, which can be converted to a percentage for the IRR. Now if you take a look at this equation, you'll notice that the capital on year t divided by the capital invested initially is really just the exit multiple. Thus, that shows the relation here in the equation where IRR is related to exit multiple along with a factor of time. Let's do an example to understand IRR better. Let's go back to the initial example where you invest $100 in startup A. This time, at a specific time, five years later, after the acquisition, that's when you get the $500 back. Now from the previous example, we know that 500 divided by 100 is a 5x exit multiple. In this case, what do you think the IRR is? Using the equation, we can plug in the exit multiple and then just put in t as five years for time. Thus, we get five raised to the one over t or one over five power minus one is 38% roughly for the IRR in this situation. Notice the 38% is much easier to compare to other investment opportunities. If perhaps you were looking to compare it with say public stocks or bonds, it's much harder to think of things in terms of exit multiples in time and much easier to compare them when they're broken down to an annualized rate like this. Now, let's continue the IRR example. Only this time, let's tweak one of the numbers and say, what if you had that same 5x return, but it took 10 years to return that capital? Well, in this case, you would have the same 500 divided by 100, but now it's raised to the one over 10 since it took 10 years. This results in a roughly 17.5% IRR. So there's two important observations we can note by looking at this. First, it's very important to note that IRR is not the same as the average annual return. In the above example, you gained $400, which is a 400% gain. And if you divided that by the 10 years, 
that's a 40% average gain per year. However, that average annual return of 40% is very different from a 17.5% IRR. The reason is because of the compounding effect of returns. Now the second thing to note is that although we doubled the time in this example from 5 years of exit to 10 years to exit, the IRR was more than halved because half of the 38% in the first example would have been 19%, but we're seeing that it's roughly 17.5. Now as we noted, both of these factors are due to the compounding of returns. Thus, it's not always easy to calculate things and approximate them in your head. You should make sure you're using the right equations so that you're getting a good apples-to-apples -apples comparison of different investment opportunities. So, when do you use IRR or exit multiples? IRR is best used when comparing two different investment opportunities, which may have different time frames of investment. Imagine you're considering two potential startup investments. Option one is a startup that you believe has potential to have a 2x return in five years. Option two, on the other hand, is a startup where you foresee a potential 3x exit, but it might take a little bit longer, so you're estimating eight years. Of these two startups, which do you think is a better investment? 2x in five years or 3x in eight? Well, looking at the numbers in time just like this, it's hard to tell, so we can bring IRR into the equation. Let's calculate the IRR for the first example. As you can see, a 2x return multiple raised to the 1 5th power is about a 14.9% return. Example 2, a 3x return multiple in 8 years is about a 14.7% return. Now, in the grand scheme of things for startup investing, the difference in these two numbers is probably within the noise of your best estimates. However, all else being equal, the two examples here show that the first option would be a better investment opportunity as you get a slightly higher IRR. Now, when do you use the exit multiple? Well, let's imagine you're now performing due diligence on a potential investment, perhaps one of the ones from the prior example. What do you think is easier to look for? A company that's capable of, say, 25.9% returns, or a company that's capable of a 5x return in seven years? It's pretty easy to see that exit multiples are easier to understand and look for when screening potential investments. Here, you can much easier estimate based on time frame, say seven years in order to hit key milestones, and then say potential acquisition targets or exit opportunities of a 5x multiple based on similar exits in the industry. The IRR is much harder as a raw number to look at in this aspect, and thus it's recommended that exit multiples are used when screening individual investments. Now, to make all of this easier, we've created a quick Crowdwise IRR calculator on our website. If you navigate to crowdwise.org and then use the resources dropdown, you'll see the IRR versus exit multiple calculator. As you can see here, you just choose an option, whether you want to calculate IRR or the exit return multiple. Then put in the numbers, hit calculate IRR or calculate multiple, and you'll get the result. At the bottom of the page, there's also some frequently asked questions, which will link to the blog post that describes this in more detail, including some of the content we discussed today. Here's the link for that if you want to go to it directly. Again, it's easiest to just find it from the drop-down menu. Now, let's take a look at what all this IRR and exit multiple math means when we look at it in terms of our startup portfolio of investments. Let's assume you're targeting a 15% IRR on your portfolio of startup investments. Assume the average startup takes seven years to exit in this example. What exit multiple companies should you be targeting for your investments? Now, most of you, including me when I started out, probably just would have calculated this by taking the exit multiple equation, plugging in your IRR of 0.15, a T of seven years, and obtained an exit multiple of 2.66x. Thus, you'd be looking at startups that have a roughly 2.7x potential to return. Well, that's wrong. Make sure you don't fall for this trap as I did at the beginning, because this is not the entire story. You'd be missing one crucial part of the bigger picture that could drastically change the type of companies that you're investing in. That is the failure rates of startups. Because they're so high risk and many of the startups will fail, it's crucial to include this in your startup math. Early stage investors must account for the high failure rates of startups. So how do you do this? Let's go back to our example. Assume an 81% failure rate for private startups. That we'll show as a reference, can vary, but let's assume that for this example. 
Now, calculate the potential return that only your successful investments, i.e. those that don't fail, must make in order to hit your startup portfolio IRR target. In this case, you can incorporate that by calculating the successful startup exit multiple, which is the same equation we had before, but divided by the success rate. In this instance, where we're assuming 81% fail, that means that roughly 19%, we'll just round to 20% for this quick example, must be successful. From that, when we divide our initial number of 2.66x, divided by 20%, which is the number that succeed, that gives us a 13.3x return multiple. This is a very different screen and a very different type of business compared to looking for that 2.66x return. Now here's the reference in case you want to break down some other startup failure rates by stage. So we refer to this as our golden rule of startup screening. Now it's a quick back of the envelope calculation and each investor will have different goals and targets for their investments. But in general, you want to ask yourself this question, is this product or service at least 10x better than what's already out there? We've shown why that 10x return multiple is very important and where it comes from. So. What we did is we created a calculator to make this all easier for you to go through for your own portfolio. Again, go to crowdwise.org, click on resources, and you'll find the Portfolio Investment Target Return Calculator. It takes three inputs, including your startup portfolio's target IRR, the time horizon that you're assuming your investments will take to exit, and the failure rate. Now, we have some FAQs listed on the page that will provide references of what numbers you might want to use when playing around with this for your own portfolio. For this example, let's assume a target startup portfolio IRR of 20%, an exit time horizon of 10 years, and a failure rate of 60%. In that instance, when you hit calculate, you'll see that your non-failed investments have to each have an average 15.5x return multiple. That's a 32% IRR for each of your non-failed investments, which again would be much higher than that calculated without a failure rate of 0.6. So here's the link, but again, go to crowdwise.org, click resources, and you'll find all our calculators easy to access there. Okay, let's get on to the assignment for today and wrap things up. Determine what your target exit multiple must be for startups in your portfolio. Go to the Crowdwise Portfolio Calculator at the link below, and then use the references in the FAQs and document what your assumptions are for your target portfolio's IRR for the startups that you invest in, the investment time horizon you're assuming, and the startup failure rate assumption. See how adjusting either time horizon, failure rates, or target IRR changes the types of companies that you need to be screening for. Lastly, document your average exit multiple that you're going to be required to find for your successful investments. Knowing this number in advance of looking for startups will help you to weed out the ones that aren't going to be good potential fits for your portfolio. Lastly, and as always, give us some feedback. Post course comments here with any questions, and for technical or other feedback, email me directly, brian at crowdwise.org. We'll see you back here for the next course after you complete this assignment.